Hello everyone, I am your host Funko Jima, and welcome to Despair. Yes indeed everyone, it has been a while since we've talked about Danganronpa around here, but it's about time we got back to the Danganronpa series, and where better to come back to than the Danganronpa 3 anime that your boy Funky, or Funko, has finally watched the entire thing to finally wrap up the original Danganronpa saga so we can move on to the next game in the series, which we'll talk more about that a different day. Today is literally all about the anime. So I'm going to go over every episode, I'm going to talk about my thoughts probably at the end of the video, just going to, you know, quick overview slash review as I go along, and I have my own notes that I wrote down about each episode. I also decided I'm going to actually go through each episode, like, and look at the synopsis as I go so I can remember, because I did watch it in two sittings, one sitting back in January, second sitting two, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, week and a half ago, two weeks ago, we'll say two weeks ago, as of this moment, um... So yeah, I kind of split up how, how uh, you know, when I watched it. But, like I said, I took notes, and I can look back at the synopsis to kind of remind myself of small details. And, uh, yeah, there's a, this is a 22-episode uh, anime. It's split into two halves, the Future Arc and the Despair Arc. Uh, the proper way to watch it is Future Episode 1, Despair Episode 1, Future Episode 2, Despair Episode 2. So alternating back and forth between the two. That is how I watched it, which was highly recommended to me, so I figure why not follow that, and to be tr truth be told, it turns out that is the best way to watch it. Um, it, it is a nice, it's, it's, not, it's paced nicely, and it has details that pertain to each other when you're watching them back and forth, and you'll see that as I go over each episode. Um, yeah, is there anything else I need to talk about? Not in particular, I think we should just get started and start talking about each episode. So, the first episode to watch was Future Arc number one. So the future arc actually takes place after all the other games. So it's after Danganronpa 2, after Makoto and them have already uh, revealed themselves to be helping out the Danganronpa 2 remnants of the spared class, trying to help them out. And, uh, well, the Future Foundation calls in Makoto, along with Kyoko and Aoi and Hiro, to a, uh, I don't know, some building, some location of Future Foundation, where they basically just call Makoto in to you know do like a mission briefing or something but in all reality they actually arrest him for helping out the remnants of despair or at least that's what they they declare him under arrest and that's kind of how the episode starts but while this meeting is going on uh a missile attacks the building and closes all the entrances and guess what happens monokuma pops up and it's killing game time all over again so, Makoto, Kyoko, and Aoi are trapped in the building. Hiro actually gets stuck outside the building. He's like the outside cover man. Let me, you know, you watch the door, we're going in type of guy. Um, and Byaku is nowhere to be seen at this point. And yeah, so they're stuck in the building, those three, with, uh, well, it's, I think it's 12 other members of the Future Foundation. I think they're all members of the Future Foundation. I'm pretty sure they are. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what happens. A new killing game begins. Now... To give you a set uh, a setup for the rest of this this half of the series, the future arc, and even some of the despair arc, I'm actually going to do a quick over here, overview here in the for the first episode of all the characters that are there that are from the Future Foundation, including Aoi, Kyoko, and Makoto. But just know that they're all locked in a building, and a new killing game begins. And the first person actually dies by the end of the first episode. We'll talk about who that is in a second once I go through all the characters. So let me go ahead and bring up my notes. I wrote down what each character is, and I have like a little note of like what I called them when I was writing my notes so pay attention now so when I'm referring to other characters later you know who I'm referring to okay so first off there's the chairman of the future foundation which is this old guy I usually just refer to him as the old guy but he's basically the chairman the leader of the future foundation his name's Kazuo Tengen and yeah so he's locked in there with them uh there's also the vice chairman his name is Kios Kiyosuke Munakata I wrote down their full names even though they only really refer to them by their last names most of the time uh, Munakata is what we'll probably call him most of the time. Um, I'll probably call him Munakata the whole time, or Monakata, Munakata. Um, yeah. Oh, and a lot of these, a lot of these uh, characters, not only were they in the Future Foundation, but they were also originally students of Host Peak Academy, so they are also have ultimate abilities. Uh, the president, the chairman guy, doesn't. He's an old guy, but the the uh, Munakata guy does. He was actually the ultimate student council president, if that means anything. I don't, I don't know. That, that one's that one's kind of weird to me, but that's what he was. Okay, so. 
the next character is the, uh, I call her teacher lady or housekeeper because she was the ultimate housekeeper. Um, her name is Chisa Yukazome. And yeah, I just call her, I usually call her teacher lady. You'll find out why I call her teacher lady because we're going to be referring to her a lot coming up here in a minute. Um, the, uh, there, there's the other guy, the next main guy is the boxer guy, at least that's what I call him, or the, you know, he's just the boxer, he's the ultimate boxer, a uh, big surprise there. His name is Juzo Sakakura, and he's basically Munakata's right-hand man. I know he's the vice chairman already, but he always has his own right-hand man that's like his best friend. Oh, and the teacher lady, uh, Yukazome is also kind of, uh, Munakata's other best friend slash lover. She's a girl, obviously, I said that already, didn't I? Um, yeah. Okay, so that's four characters. We have the uh, the teacher guy. I call him the teacher guy because we have teacher lady and teacher guy. His name's Koichi Kizakura. Um, he, I don't know. He, he doesn't seem that important from the beginning. He's just a teacher guy. Uh, you see him more in, you know, later as we go. But yeah, that's what I call him, the teacher guy. I, oh, and he was just a teacher. They don't really refer to him as an ultimate. So he's one of the ones that I'm not sure wasn't actually an ultimate originally. He does help recruit the ultimates for the Ho Hope's Peak. But again, we'll talk more about him later. Um, there's a girl in a wheelchair who doesn't really talk much. Her name is Miyaya Gekogahara. Uh, she was the ultimate therapist. And yeah, she basically just sits in a wheelchair, kind of weird. And she doesn't really say anything because she doesn't... Oh, she actually uses like a like a speak and spell computer to speak for her, basically. She doesn't have her own voice. Um, let's see. Next, get, next, next person on there would be the crazy mask girl. Her name is Seiko Kimura. She was the ultimate pharmacist, and, uh, yeah, her, her main things is that she's kind of weird and crazy, and, uh, yeah, she wears this weird mask. We're gonna call her Mask Girl, or Crazy Mask Girl most of the time. Uh, there's this baker lady, or the baker chick, as I refer to her. She's the ultimate confectioner, ultimate baker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, her name is Ruruka Ando, or Ruruka. Uh, yeah, another, another female, lots of girls in this. Um, Ruruka Ando. I'll probably just call her Baker Chick, because Ruru... I never remember her name when I was writing it down. Um, and then there's her boyfriend, who is the ultimate blacksmith. I call him Boyfriend, or Boyfriend Blacksmith Guy. <laughs> His name's Sinosuke Izayoi. Izayoi? Izai... I don't know. Izayoi. Whatever his name is. Either way, I call him Blacksmith Guy most of the time. Um, then there's this guy that has, like, a horse face mask. Uh, he's the ultimate wrestler. His, they refer to him as the Great Gozu. I'll probably just call him Horse Face, because he has a fucking horse face. And then there's this weird, creepy-looking weirdo guy that's not real. He doesn't seem that... And like He ends up not really being that important of a character. Um, but he's there. He's one of the 15 people. His name is Daisuku ban Bandai. And I looked it up because I don't really say... I don't think he's the ultimate farmer. I don't remember them referring to him as that during the thing. So, yeah. And then last but not least, there's this younger kid that shows up. Um, he, I guess he wasn't even supposed to be at the meeting. His name is... Ryota Mitarai, and he's actually the ultimate animator, and, uh, well, a lot more about him later, but, yeah, he kind of shows up, and everybody's like, oh, what are you doing here, kind of, like, he did, he wasn't even supposed to be there today, you know, he's one of those guys, um, yeah, so, that's 15, hopefully I didn't miss anybody on this list, I think I got them all, anyway, I'll probably call him Anime Dude, or Mitarai, those are his names, so that's all the characters that are stuck in this building for the new killing game, um, the other, oh, there's one, there's one cat, or there's a couple rules to this killing game that probably need to be laid out real quick, just so you guys get the idea of how the rest of the killing is gonna work. Um, they all have this wristband or bracelet or watch or whatever, you know, kind of like in the um, in the 999 games, the nonary games. Uh, it basically poisons them when they try to like escape or uh, mess with the bracelet, or if they commit a forbidden action. The forbidden actions are actually very important. Every character in this has their own forbidden action that they cannot do. And from the very beginning, you don't actually know what they all are. So everyone has... The, it actually becomes very relevant to the plot, each person's action, why they can't do certain things or why they can, or why they, you know, their motivations are, are motivated by their forbidden actions. So, yeah. And then the other caveat is every... I don't know what the time limit is, but every time there's a time limit... Uh, the bracelet will put them all to sleep, and when they wake up, someone will be dead. And the assumption is that the killer will be awake to kill one person while they're asleep. That's the assumption, at least from the beginning. So, yeah, that's pretty much the layout. So by the end of the first episode, everyone falls asleep, they wake up, and Chisa Yukazomi, the teacher lady, 
basically the vice vice uh, what do you call him? What I call him vice chairman, the Munakata guy, his girl, dead. Yep. The show starts off with her dead. And scene. Moving on to Despair Arc number one. Let's do it. Okay, so let's give you a quick overview of what the Despair Arc is based on. So the Despair Arc actually takes place before all the Danganronpa games. It's back before all the Despair stuff happened. And, uh, yeah, it kind of starts off, uh, Yukazome, the teacher lady who we just saw die, starts off as one of the main characters. She's sitting there talking with the Munakata guy and the boxer dude and the teacher guy that I was talking about. They're basically just kind of talking about it, uh, you know, the Hope's Peak Academy and the incoming classes and some of the stuff that might be going on behind the scenes of Hope's Peak Academy that they're going to start investigating, you know, secrets that the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, which... He'll become more relevant in a little bit. I mean, you probably already know enough about him from the games, but, you know, there's more about him in the show. Um, basically, they're going to kind of do their own investigation while they work at the school, and Yukazome gets assigned to be a teacher. And guess which class she's the teacher for? She's the teacher for the Danganronpa 2 guys, the guys that become the Remnants of Despair. That whole class? Yep, they become basically the main characters for this Despair arc. I mean, there's other characters also, but they are the main focus of Despair arc, which I thought was really cool that we got to see the Remnants of Despair before they went Despair mode. Um, yeah, so it kind of starts off, they're kind of like a lazy class. They kind of suck. They don't even show up to class. So uh, Yukazome, you know, being the hardworking, diligent housekeeper teacher lady that she is, she goes around and recruits and, like, makes all of her students show up to class. She goes around to each one of them like, bitch, get to class, bitch, get to class. She does that to all of them. Um, basically, it's your intro to all those characters for each one of the, you know, from Don and Ropa 2 characters. And also, in the meantime, while that's going on, uh, Chiaki, who, if you remember in the Don and Ropa 2 uh, game, she's kind of like not even a real person in that game. She's actually like part of the, the AI or whatever. Well, we're back to before she actually... I guess died. We don't really know what happens to Shiaki, why she's not a real person in Danganronpa 2. Um, but what we do know is that in the, when, before everything happened, she was a real girl. She was a gamer girl, just like the persona that we see. And we get to see her actually meet Hajime for the first time. So they actually met way back in the day. And Hajime is actually, you know, what you expect him to be from how he is in Danganronpa 2, not what he turns into post Danganronpa 2, or I should say before Danganronpa 2, before. I don't know. It's hard to really talk about all that stuff. But anyway, the point is, this is when they first meet each other and they play video games, or at least Chiaki tries to get them to play video games. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the whole first episode of Spare Arc. It just sets up all the characters, just sets up that they're just that they're investigating the school, and it sets up, you know, meeting Hajime. And that's pretty much all you get out of the first episode of Despair Arc. So now that I've set up everything for future in Despair Arc, hopefully I can talk about each episode a little bit faster. This episode, this 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 video is probably going to be really long because I'm going to go through every episode. So yeah, let's go to future arc number two. Okay, so episode two of the future arc, uh, basically, like I said at the end of the episode, Yukazome is dead. So the first, the beginning of the episode is them all arguing about it, and Munakata's super pissed because that was his girl, right? And the boxer guy as well because they're all friends. Um, and basically. I can't remember exactly why the argument happens. The boxer guy gets all pissed off at Mitarai, the anime dude, the little nerd kid, and he's going to beat the shit out of him. But then the farmer weird weird guy with the high-pitched voice that I'm talking about, that weird, I just call him weird face guy because he has a weird face and he has a high-pitched voice. It's very weird. Um, he tries to intervene. He kind of, he, he, uh, he kind of, I don't know, punching, or not punching, but, you know, violence happens, and then all of a sudden the... Uh, the dude's bracelet, the weird face guy, his bracelet goes off and he dies. So that's when you first learn about the forbidden action stuff. I know I mentioned it all earlier to kind of set up the game. I kind of forgot all the explanation of the game was in the second episode, but that's okay. I went over already. Um, the point is his forbidden action was to witness violence by another, you know, anybody else in the, in the, uh, in the group. So he saw the boxer guy attack the anime guy and he instantly dies. He gets poisoned and he's dead. So that's two people dead already. Yukazome, farmer dude, dead. Both dead right off the bat. Holy shit, this is real. They all start, you know, a, fr a fracas happens. Makoto is still arguing with that Monokata guy about the whole, you know, he's under arrest thing. But lo and behold, the horsehead guy gets all high and righteous and mighty and he starts defending Makoto and he helps him out. He actually takes Makoto and Aoi and the wheelchair girl 
Oh, the wheelchair girl, by the way, starts off by trying to resist the whole Monokuma thing. It doesn't really work out for her. Um, the wheelchair girl, who doesn't really speak, by the way, but she does use her little like program she has program skills basically so she her her little program that talks is like an ai for her yeah so that that's that that thing all, all happens too but anyway the point is they escape together so it's makoto aoi uh great gozu the horse head guy and the wheelchair girl all escape the room running away from Munakata. and uh yeah that's that's basically the whole episode at least in terms of like the main things that happen um they get away, they lock themselves into a room, they like barricade themselves in, those four that I just listed, and uh, then the next sleep time happens, and when they wake up, they find Owie stabbed to death. And I was like, no! So the second episode of the spare arc isn't really super duper important. Mostly what happens is the, the Danganronpa 2 class is... You know, they're just now starting to go to class, but they're not really friends yet. They don't really, you know, get along with each other in general. So, uh, as per Yukazome, the teacher lady's suggestion, she's talking to Chiaki, and she suggests, because Chiaki's sitting there being alone or playing video games by herself, she suggests, hey, how about you play some video games with your friends? You know, the other kids in class might enjoy it. So, basically... As per Chiaki's video games, she starts bringing the class together and they all start becoming friends. So the whole episode is basically about the bonding between the Danganronpa 2 Remnants of Despair class so they all become friends. Most of the episode is just that. There is one specific scene that is fucking hilarious in the episode, the second episode. It's, I referred to it as the sexy soup scene. Basically what happened is uh, Teru Teru, the cook, you know, the fat, horny cook kid, he makes, you know, he makes all the food. Um... Kyoko, you know, the little bitch-ass, you know, sneaky little dancer girl, you know, that's always conniving. She, like, spikes the soup that he makes with, like, some aphrodisiac stuff and gets all of them hornied up, and it's pretty freaking hilarious. Um, it's pretty funny. I, that, it's one of the funnier scenes, and Shiaki kind of saves the day with that situation. And even even the teacher lady, Yukizome, gets in on it. She gets all horned up, too, a little bit. It's, it's a pretty funny scene. I, I, I thought it was very funny. Um... But yeah, that's most of the second episode of the Despair arc. Uh, the other main things that happen are Hajime is talking to the Future Foundation guy, the old guy. What was his name? Kazuo or whatever. The old Future Foundation guy. Um, Hajime talks to him and he warns him about the school might ask him to join some weird program or something. I don't know. It's, it's I can't remember the exact conversation. It's just something like that happens. Um... Yeah, that's mostly what happens in the second episode. It's not really an overall uh, super important plot episode or anything. No, no big events go down other than the sexy soup scene. So, yeah. Oh, oh. Did I... Does that happen in the second episode as well? I guess it does. Um, Yukizome must have a conversation with Hajime about the program as well. I know Kazuo does, but apparently Yukizome also talks to Hajime about the program. And, uh... Yeah, she basically asks Hajime about, the like, is, does he know anything about some weird secret program type of thing. Basically, Yukizome meets Hajime. That's kind of all you really need to know. Um, yeah, so, moving back to Future Arc 3. Okay, so good news in the third episode of the Future Arc. Aoi's not dead, even though at the end of the last episode, she totally was stabbed to death. But guess what? It was all just some set-up childish prank just to, I guess, thwart the killer from actually killing her. It's it's kind of weird. I, I honestly don't know what the real plan was, but I all I, but what I wrote down is I felt like it was an excuse to switch Aoi's outfit because the beginning of the show she's wearing like, you know, like some kind of, you know, almost like a work uniform, like a like actually like a suit almost, and then they switch her to wearing her freaking white tank top and jean shorts. And if you remember what Aoi looks like, that's exactly what you want her to be wearing most of the time. Just saying. Uh, anyways, but even bigger swerve, not only is Aoi not dead, the horsehead guy, Great Gozu, he's the one that's actually dead. And remember, he's in the same room with Mitarai, Aoi, and Makoto. How did that happen? I don't know. But apparently the killer got in there and killed them, or one of those three is the killer. Am I right? So anyway, that happens, uh, but to, uh, to thwart all the other other people there like accusing Makoto of being the, the traitor because the whole point of this killing game by the way is 
They're trying to exp expose the traitor. The real killer is the traitor of the Future Foundation. Who is it? Uh, figure out who it is, and and once they're dead, the killing game's over. That's basically what the rules are. Um, but the idea is, you know, that Makoto's trying to thwart him being the traitor, so he, he does, like, a broadcast thing within the building, and he basically tells everybody what his forbidden action is, because, again, anybody's forbidden action is committed, they die naturally through their freaking bracelet poison. So he tells everybody that he cannot run in the halls, so he can't run away from anyone anyways. And I know earlier I said he ran away, but they didn't really run, they just kind of walked. Um, so yeah, that happened. Um, anything else? Oh, and then in the meantime, the other people that have kind of split into other groups, I haven't really talked about where everybody else is at. Um, currently, the mask, the crazy mask girl I was talking about, along with the baker chick and the blacksmith dude, that's her boyfriend, the blacksmith dude's her boyfriend, uh, of the baker chick. Uh, they're off in one group, and uh, mask chick is like, there's apparently some like friendship or past friendship from between between these three, and the ba and the mask chick is accusing the baker chick of being the traitor. She's like, "You're the traitor. You're a conniving bitch. You you probably did it." And obviously the baker chick's like, "It's not me." And then the boyfriend's like, "No, don't fight each other." And blah blah blah. And then um, crazy mask chick and it gets all pissed off, and so she takes like this weird substance because she's the ultimate pharmacist. She like takes a pill or some shit. And she goes absolutely fucking insane and turns into like a crazy monster and she starts attacking the baker chick and that's kind of where that gets left off. And then uh, the other group that's around is Kyoko, the old, uh, you know, the future foundation leader guy, Kazuo or whatever his name is, and then the anime guy, Mitarai. They're all, they're in one group. Um, and then that Juzo boxer dude shows up to attack them. I guess because Kyoko, I don't know, he thinks Kyoko's a traitor. I don't know. He, they're just trying to take control of the situation. Between Monokata and the boxer dude, they're pissed that the girl is dead, Yukazome, their friend. So they're accusing everybody. And boxer dude goes after Kyoko, and then, like, they go after, he goes after that group, the Kyoko old guy, uh, Mitarai group. And the, Monokata, in the meantime, starts going after Makoto, and they have a, they start their little spat, for at least their first spat argument that they, you know, they're doing their thing, and I think that's most of the episode. Um, I don't think there's anything else that's worth mentioning in that episode, other than at the very end of the episode is when you get to see Hero again, and Hero's just chilling outside, trying to call for help, basically. <laughs> trying to call for backup, because he's out there by himself, like, where the hell is the rest of the Future Foundation to come help? We need help. All right, and that's pretty much Future Arc Episode 3. Nothing else really goes down. And, uh, yeah, moving on to Despair Arc 3. So the third episode of Despair Arc is where things start to get real interesting. So, if you remember the Kazuru incident from Danganronpa 2, this is going to help. Uh, because this is going to fill in all that gaps and you get to see this story happen in real time. So the Kazuru incident, Kazuru is Fuyuhiko's last name, if you remember. Fuyuhiko, the, the kid that's like the, ma the you know, the ultimate yakuza kid or whatever kazuru incident involves his sister if you remember um well if you remember what happens with her we're going to talk about it right now so basically uh his sister her, her name is natsumi by the way uh natsumi uh what was the last name kazuru i just said it natsumi kazuru so we'll just call her natsumi so natsumi is actually in hajime's class so remember he's in the reserve course so they're not ultimates uh so his sister's not an ultimate, so but she walks around all pompous like she's a fucking Yakuza leader. Don't fuck with me. I got skills, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, all the other girls hate her for that attitude. And then it turns into a big argument between her and some girl that's a friend that's actually friends with Mahiru. If you remember Mahiru from Danganronpa 2, she's the photographer chick. Um, she's actually involved in this whole Kazuru incident, if you remember. At least her friends were. Um, so some of her friends from the reserve class... Uh, her girl, the girl, the main girl that argues with Natsumi, her name is Sato. Uh, they're the ones that argue. They basically threaten to kill each other type of thing. And then uh, before the whole thing goes down, Hajime takes the time to actually talk to Natsumi and tries to tell her, you know, it's not all about being ultimate. You don't got to be special. You know, we're all just blah, blah, blah. You know, talent is talent. It doesn't have to be ultimate talent. But then Natsumi's like, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. And then the next day, Natsumi's found dead. And obviously, it's pretty obvious that Sato did it. And then a couple days later, Sato's found having killed herself. So, murder-suicide. Gotta love it. 
at a high school. Fucking great. So anyway, Hajime gets pissed the fuck off, and he's like, hell no, I'm gonna go talk to Mahiru about this. So he tries to go over to the ultimate side of Hope's Peak to talk to Mahiru. In the meantime, that Juzo Kizakura, or whatever the fuck his name is, you know, the guy, not Kizakura, whatever, Juzo, the fucking boxer guy, he, he's over at Hope's Peak side. Uh, he, he intercepts Hajime before he gets there, and he's like, boy, you ain't an ultimate, get out of here. And Hajime's like, but I need to talk to Mahiru, blah, blah, blah. And Mahiru guy's like, nah, you ain't getting in here. And so he beats the shit out of Hajime. He's just like, nah, dude, get the fuck out. He really, really just beats the shit out of him. So thus, Hajime feels all powerless, because he's not, he doesn't have any power, any skill. He can't, he feels like it's hopeless, he can't do anything. So that does not help for, you know... Hajime's current state of affairs and being bored with life and feeling undeserving of life in general, really. So, you know, he's he's very uh, he's very envious of the ultimate powers. Uh, he wants to be one. We'll get more to that in a second. But anyway, the school super covers up the um, the murder suicide, and the outside world never gets to find out about it. And uh, obviously, Yukazome. And even the boxer guy are like, dude, what the fuck? This is not good. Why are they covering this up? This is a big deal. Why are they being sneaky about it? Are they afraid that they might get looked into a little bit more deeper if, you know, the investigation might find some more things that they don't want them to find? Let's just cover this up, sweep us under the rug, and never happen. And, uh, yeah. Doesn't go over well with the, uh, with the other guys doing the investigation. You know, Mon Munakata, boxer guy, teacher lady. Not feeling it. Um, oh. And because Hajime got his ass kicked, well, remember that experiment thing the the uh, Kazuo dude told him not to go into? Well, Hajime volunteers to go into it. He's like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going in. Because basically the idea is they promise that he'll become an ultimate if, you know, they'll basically help him become an ultimate, essentially. And that's what Hajime wants. So he goes into this program not knowing, any, having any idea what the hell he's about to get himself into. And that ends episode three of the spare arc it's pretty uh it's pretty fucked up and that's and that's where <laughs> this is where shit starts to happen for reals okay so episode four of future arc um pretty much starts off with you know how the boxer guy was attacking kyoko kyoko actually like messes up her ankle or whatever but then the old dude knocks the shit out of the boxer dude while he wasn't paying attention and thus the boxer dude is knocked out so that's good that allows Kyoko and, and Mitarai to kind of, the anime dude, kind of walk away and escape. Meanwhile, while that's going on, uh, Munakata actually captures Makoto and, like, takes him to go execute his ass. He's like, I'm gonna go execute him in the name of the Future Foundation. He's the traitor. Let's kill him. Then this whole should be all over with, right? And then when that happens, the old dude goes to confront Munakata. Meanwhile, Kyoko and Mitarai, you know, go off on their own. Eventually, they meet up with the other teacher guy. Just want to mention that. Um, whatever the fuck his name was. is I don't know. The other teacher guy. The one wears the hat. Um, yeah, they go off and they meet up with him. That's pretty much where they end up in the, by the end of the episode. They're just off meeting up with him. Uh, not a lot else happens with them. Uh, the other thing is, while uh, Munakata is about to kill Makoto, uh, old dude shows up to confront Munakata, Kazuo. So they're, you know, basically it's the chairman and the vice chairman arguing with each other. In the meantime, Aoi and the wheelchair girl actually catch up with Makoto, you know, where Makoto's at. And while they're argu while the vice chairman and the chairman are arguing, they grab Makoto and they escape. And obviously Makoto can't run on his own because he can't run in the halls, right? So Aoi picks his ass up and they're running. They're running. Aoi's running, baby. Um, we'll talk more about some of the more forbidden actions eventually, more, especially when they become more relevant. Uh, but that's mainly what happens. Makoto gets away. The old guy and the you know the chairman, vice chairman are f arguing and fighting with each other. And uh, yeah, Kyoko and the anime dude meet up with the other teacher guy. And I think that's mainly all that happens. I don't think we get back to anybody else's current goings on. I think that's the whole episode. Okay, so episode four of the Despair arc finally lets our boy Nagito have his time to shine. You remember Nagito from Danganronpa 2? We haven't really talked about him specifically yet, but here we go. This is his episode. Let's see what he's all about this time. So basically his class, the Danganronpa 2 class, is about to take this big test. He realizes that most of them aren't ready to do it. They're all freaking out about it. He wants to do something nice for them because he's a really good friend, and he's trying to figure out what he can do to help postpone the exam so they can have more time. 
So basically, he knows about the other ultimate class, uh, a class that includes Seiko, the baker chick, and the blacksmith guy. It's a different ultimate class, but he knows about them. So he goes to the Seiko chick, who's the ultimate pharmacist, and tries to get a laxative from her that they can use for i don't know nagito has plans for it i think he lies to her and says that he needs it for himself but you know he has alternate intentions for it um they never really make it clear i don't think what he's going to use it for but that's what he goes to seiko for and uh in the meantime uh you also get to see some more relationship stuff between the baker chick and the mask girl seiko um they they kind of you got to get to see their friendship it kind of it, it's 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 kind of a give and take relationship in that Seiko gives Ruruka takes and that's the that's the relationship they're friends but very weird one way friends as far as I'm concerned Ruruka always just takes from Seiko it's a fucked up relationship um but the idea is, is Ruruka the baker chick is asking for some performance enhancing drugs essentially to put into her food for some competition that she's about to be in it's like I don't know and Seiko is reluctant to give it to her uh but i think she ends up actually let me see yeah oh what happens is while that's happening uh nagito accidentally on purpose his with his lucky ass switches the drugs so the laxative and the performance enhancer that he that he grabbed actually gets switched accidentally and so uh the baker chip chick in her competition ends up putting laxative in her in her food Thus, the teacher judges that, you know, eat it. That goes wrong. Uh, and then on the other side of things, Nagito, during the test, I think it's during the test. Um, let me double check what Nagito's plan was. <sighs> um, oh, 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 let me finish what I was saying. So the reason why the drugs got mixed up, uh, Nagito had a bag, and basically it's the same bag that Seiko has or something, and that gets switched. Basically their bags get switched. That's why the drug gets switched. And there's also another thing that's in Nagito's bag that Seiko ends up with that she doesn't know that she has that gets her in trouble as well. Apparently, Nagito has some kind of bomb he was going to set off, and Seiko ends up having the switch to it. So, yeah, that's bad. Uh, again, the laxative thing happens. And then on the other side, Nagito, when he was... Uh, I guess the... I guess the I guess he was gonna use the laxative on some dog, but when he fed the dog the laxative, it ended up being a performance enhancing, which makes the dog grow giant and go freaking nuts. And then the bomb that I'm referring to fucking explodes because the dog. It's not even because anybody set the switch off. The dog just ends up making the bomb go off, and so chaos ensues. The class doesn't have to take their test, and the other three kids all get in trouble. Seiko. Uh, Ruruka and her boyfriend boyfriend is just there by association all three of them actually get expelled from Hope's Peak Academy because Seiko had the bomb switch Baker chick you know poisoned everyone with laxatives and I guess her boyfriend was sort of like just collateral damage I'm not I forget what he does exactly to get himself involved but he's there the whole time and they all get expelled from Hope's Peak it's pretty fucked up and Nagito in the meantime for his actions gets suspended he doesn't get expelled he just gets suspended and because he gets suspended, Yukazome, his teacher, actually gets in trouble because it's his teacher, right? And she should have, you know, whatever, been in charge of his not, you know, his whereabouts and what he's up to. So she actually gets, she didn't get a suspended, but she actually gets reassigned to teach the reserve course instead of the Danganronpa 2, two squad anymore. So they basically just shun her over to the reserve course, which actually is helpful for her because she's trying to do the investigation over there anyways. But she has to leave her class. So she's like, all right, Chiaki. You take care of my kids you know you're the you're the class representative now you take you take take care of these kids while they're doing their thing and uh yeah so now that we know more about what went down between seiko ruruka and her boyfriend in the past we come back to the future where you know seiko's already going on a rampage to kill ruruka because she thinks she's the traitor and obviously blacksmith boyfriend's involved in all this too and he actually has one really good line because you know his, his girl's the baker chick, and he really likes all her baked goods. He, he he has this really good line where he's like, I will kill you in the name of deliciousness! That was one of my favorite lines in the whole show. I fucking laughed. As soon as I saw that and read that, I was like, oh my god, that is amazing. Um, anyway, so that happens. And he basically says that to Seiko because he's trying to kill his girl, right? So, 
the point is that whole situation is happening. That the, the episode kind of has a lot of flashbacks in it where they're showing back to when Seiko and Ruruka were kids and they first became friends, where Ruruka first started exploiting Seiko's you know neediness and helpfulness and being a nice friend, while Ruruka's just take take take. Um, but anyway, uh, that you know that that whole thing keeps going. Uh, the fight is still happening. Uh, Seiko kind of corners Ruruka for a bit. Um, it looks like Seiko's gonna get her. In the meantime, Blacksmith for boyfriend dude kind of gets stuck in another room, and there's like another attack that happens on the outside of the building that like causes the inside of the building to rumble and stuff. And it actually helps the blacksmith guy find this weird secret door. So he finds a secret door that he thinks might be an exit to get the fuck out of the building. And that's kind of where he ends up at the end of the episode. Meanwhile, his his girlfriend's getting attacked by Seiko. Uh, Seiko or some who knocks out what happens I'm trying to remember exactly I think Seiko knocks out all the lights or something but then the wheelchair girl shows up and actually knocks out oh I forgot to mention something I forgot to mention something at the end of the last episode all right so uh, it's unimportant for this current moment but the wheelchair chick actually knocks uh Seiko out so she can't kill Ruruka. So Seiko gets knocked out. The crate, you know, the girl's all gone all crazy into demon mode. So she's knocked out, allows Ruruka to get away to go find her boyfriend, and the wheelchair chick just, I don't, I don't really know where, I mean, that's all I got for that episode. She just knocks out. She's the reason why Seiko gets knocked out, and, that, and that's how that happens. But uh, what I didn't mention is that in the previous episode at the end, um, Oh, right. Okay. I, f I forgot to mention a couple things. Um, okay, so there's a couple things I forgot to mention in the previous episode. Real quick. You know how I said Munakata and the old guy were fighting? They were fighting with each other, right? The old guy actually gets, like, impaled by some debris. So he gets stuck on this debris like he's basically just stabbed through the back. And he's just stuck and he can't move. And basically Munakata is ready to just kill his ass. Um... And then that kind of leads to what happens in this 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 fifth episode, where before uh, before he goes to kill him, the Kazuo dude, the old guy, the chairman guy, actually tells uh, Munakata who the killer is because it turns out the old guy's bracelet, his forbidden action, is to not tell any lies. He must always tell the truth. So he actually tells Munakata who the killer is. And Munakata's like, what the fuck? It doesn't make any sense to him when he hears what it is. And when that happens, he kills the old man, but not before the old man stabs him in the eye. So Munakata loses an eye. Old man is dead. Doesn't even take the killing game to get the old man dead. So that's another person in the killing game. Dead. Like, puts us at, what, four people dead? And then also, the other thing that happened in the previous episode that I forgot to mention is while Aoi and Makoto are running away... And they're with the wheelchair chick as well, right? The boxer dude wakes up and he's actually at, at chasing them down. And wheelchair chick stops to fight him. So wheelchair chair chick versus boxer dude is about to happen. And at the end of the fourth episode, you actually find out that the wheelchair chick is being controlled by Monica. Yeah, Monica from Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. The little green hair Junko ripoff. Monica is controlling. She's, she's a part of this too. What the hell? So that was part of episode 4. But then in episode 5, like I mentioned, she knocks out Seiko. I, I forget exactly what happens. How she, how she gets anywhere near Seiko, I don't remember. But somehow Seiko gets knocked out in the whole midst of that whole thing happening. Um, I just wanted to go back and mention that because episode 5 didn't really have much else with, with the wheelchair chick in it. Because we're going to get to episode 6 where more things will happen. Um... But yeah, I think that's it for episode 5. So old man dies. Oh, and at the very end of the episode, everyone is falls asleep again. And it is revealed that Seiko is the next victim. So the girl that got knocked out, the crazy mask chick, she's the one that ends up being the next victim. Um, so yeah, that's actually five people dead then. Alright. In that case, moving back to Despair Arc number 5. So Despair Arc number 5 finds us six months after episode 4. Yes, yeah, so six months have passed. Remember, the teacher had gone over to the reserve class. Six months have passed. So now she gets to finally come back over to her Danganronpa 2 class. 
and they're all excited to have her back. They have a big old party, and yeehaw, Yukazome is back with her class. I mean, that's kind of the main thing that happens. Um, the cool thing is you get to see some of the stuff th that you see in Danganronpa 2 that kind of changes some of your, you know, you know, some of the big twists and reveals and weird, you know, extra information you get in Danganronpa 2 that doesn't make sense because of a time lapse. Well, this is the time lapse that happens. So, like, things like Gundam and Sonya becoming a relationship type of thing. Uh, Hiyoko, when she goes from being the little small girl to being all grown up, that happens. Um... I don't know. There's other things, too, I'm sure. But those are the two main ones that come to mind. Uh, the other big thing that happens because time has passed is that a new class is about to start at Hope's Peak Academy. Guess whose class it is? It's time for Makoto Nayagi. Well, not just Makoto. It's everybody. And that includes Junko Enoshima. She's there, dude. She's there. So, yeah. She, she and her sister Mukuro, this is where they're about to start Host Peak Academy. And she's already ready to unleash despair upon the entirety of the school. She's ready as soon as she gets there, man. It's You can see it happening and you're like, oh man, this is going to get good. It's going to get fucked up, but it's going to get good. This is where the show truly, like when Junko shows up, this is when you know shit's about to start going down. And, uh, well... It, it does. Uh, it, it certainly does. Um, is there anything else that happens, like, in particular that's amazing? Um, I mean, obviously the class stayed together really well because Chiaki was, you know, their, their guiding light, their beacon, their class rep, you know? Um, just trying to think if there's anything else. Um, oh, right. Another big thing that kind of gets talked, like gets brought up more in this in this episode which we haven't really talked about and i haven't brought it up because i haven't really talked about the danganronpa 2 class in length but if you remember in the danganronpa 2 game there was a fat byakuya right and it turned out he was like an imposter he was the ultimate imposter who could just imitate anybody well there actually was a the, a kid in that spot in that class originally guess who that kid was it's the ultimate anime kid, the one that's actually in the future arc, the Mitarai guy. He's actually part of the Danganronpa 2 class. And that is interesting and important to know. Um, but I didn't mention this earlier because it wasn't really relevant to any of the beginning parts of the show. But Mitarai, who's part of the Danganronpa 2 class, he's an ultimate animator. He just wants to stay home and do animation. That's what he wants to do. So the ultimate imposter kid finds him. And, uh, basically, they make it, they come to an agreement where the ultimate imposter guy will take his spot in class while he can stay home and animate. That's essentially what happens. And so, fat, there's a fat Mitarai now, <laughs> basically. Fat anime kid exists now. Meanwhile, anime kid gets to stay home and animate like he wants to. Um, but in this episode, the fifth episode, he kind of gets sick or whatever. And so the, the fat kid has to, like... The fat imposter version of him has to go... Like, the actual Mitarai gets sick at home. So he went. He goes and gets uh, Mikan. Mikan, Mikan. I always called her Mikan. The, the the girl who's the ultimate nurse or whatever. Um, he takes her back to, to Anime Kid's place to help, help fucking heal him up. And that's... I just needed to mention that because Mitarai being at home animating secretly is kind of a big deal. The ultimate imposter guy is interesting because we know about him from... Danganronpa 2, we just don't know a lot about him. But, more importantly, like I said, that Meteor is at home animating, and he's, you know, very obsessed with that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I guess that's really... Oh, the other thing is that the the thing, the project, the, the, the program that Hajime went into, right, uh, that's... It's been six months since he did that, right? So, they've been working on him for six months, and it's revealed at the end of the episode that he has become the long-haired, crazy version of Hajime that you see. That where he's the, you know, becomes the ultimate, what do they call him, Kamakura or whatever. Yeah. That's 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 the last thing you see of Hajime in that episode. You get to see him being all, uh, you know, despair mode, we'll call him. Despair mode Hajime. And I think that's it. Yeah, the main thing was that, remember that Junko is now at the school and despair has begun. <laughs> Okay, so episode 6 is where they start trying to figure out who the killer is more. And uh, Kyoko, you know, ultimate detective being her, 
started doing some great investigations and narrowing it down. She realized that everybody seems to be being stabbed in the knife or stabbed in the chest with a knife. That seems to be how the death, the MO of the death is. The other thing is, meanwhile, while they're, you know, doing some discovering, they actually find the blacksmith guy dead. They find him dead. Yeah, that's the surprise. They, like, just find him and he's already dead and he has the knife wound to the chest. It's like, oh, shit. Wait, why is he dead? How many people died on the last time we went to sleep? Because remember, Seiko died at the end of last episode. Why is Blacksmith dude dead also? Interesting. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Mar write that down. Remember that for later. So I think, in general, there's not really much else that happens with the group. I think the main next thing that happens is that Makoto finds a way to actually call Byakuya for help. So Byakuya finally gets, Byakuya gets to finally show up and... Uh, Basically, what he gets to tell Makoto and Aoi, it's Makoto and Aoi that he's talking to, he basically gets to tell them that it turns out the wheelchair girl, Miaya, already been dead this whole time, which we just kind of figured out two episodes ago when we found out that she was being controlled by Monica. So Monica, I don't know if Monica's the one that killed her, but she's already been dead, and Monica has basically been, you know, utilizing that to impersonate her and, you know, have her own eyes out there, which is interesting. Well... To deal with Monica, guess who, uh, guess who Byakuya calls for help? Remember Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls? You know who the main characters are there? Kamaru and Toko over on Jabberwock Island. So, yeah, Byakuya calls them, tells them to, uh, basically go look for Monica, essentially. And, uh, uh, oh yeah, and then that, and then Byakuya says he's on his way to come help makoto and 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 squad yeah that's pretty much everything that happens yeah the main thing is that they find the other dude with a knife in his chest they're not sure how he gets like how, who like the real killer must have done it during the non-time when they were asleep essentially is what they're trying to say basically two people die and they're trying to figure it out and then the whole thing with byakuya and that's pretty much the whole episode um uh, more of that on the next time we get to this to this future arc for now back to despair arc Okay, so episode six of Despair Arc is the Hajime episode, essentially. Now that he's being revealed as, you know, the project is done and he has basically become, what do they call him? What's his name? Izuru Kamakura? He's basically become Izuru Kam Kamakura. He's not Hajime anymore. So we'll probably try to call him Kamakura, but, or I'll just call him Hajime, but that's what he is now. We'll just call him the Kamakura version of Hajime. Um, basically now he's that, and uh, yeah, so he's... He's that now, and uh, the whole episode is kind of like, who will find out about him first? Junko and Mukuro start their whole freaking infiltration of the school. They actually kidnap one of the board members of the school, and they torture his ass to reveal that the project that where, where uh, Hajime you know, gets created, basically. Um, he reveals it while he's getting tortured. Junko removes his eyeball, and uh, they use that because they have, like, an eye scanner <laughs> to get to where Hajime's at. So, yeah, that's how Junko finds out about Hajime. In the meantime, uh, Yukazome is doing her own investigation. She sneaks into, the, like, the director's office or something, like, the, the headmaster's office, and she finds out about the project as well. It's actually a project to create the ultimate hope. That's the whole idea. Basically, you know, create the ultimate hope by creating somebody who has all the ultimate powers. Um... That's the whole plan, anyways. And that's what Yukazome finds out. And so she actually goes to discover about... I think I don't think she actually knows where to look, but she knows about the project now. That's the point. But in the meantime, Junko and Mukuro actually go to see Hajime because they have the eyeball to get in there. And they... Basically, she tries to sway him over to the spare side because, you know, isn't the point he's the ultimate hope or whatever? He's supposed to be some weird... I don't know. It's hard to describe Hajime. He just thinks everything's boring. He's like, how boring? You're boring. You're boring. But uh, Junko tries, she does her thing, and then Hajime thinks about it, knocks her bitch ass out, and then leaves her a note about, like, you know, I'll meet you later type of thing. <laughs> so, uh-oh, is Hajime going to be swayed? Like, that's the worry, right? Um, and then after that happens, after Junko wakes up, I forget how she comes across him, but she actually meets up with Mitarai, the, the, the anime kid who's been staying home working on anime. I forget how she meets up with them, but basically... She can she can sense that he's he's got some uh, 
he's got some despair in him. You know, he can, she can see the glint, the hint of, of, of corruption and that she can, the side of him that she can corrupt, basically. She can sense it. And so that's where she starts wiggling her way into Mitarai's brain and to let the despair spread. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Here we go. It's starting to begin, man. That's pretty much all that happens in episode six also. And you can see it, man. Junko's about to take this shit down. All right. Let's get back to the future arc. So episode 7 of the future arc is kind of like a little side quest episode because basically after having been called by Byakuya, it's an episode that follows around Kamaru and Toko over on Jabberwock Island. It kind of starts off, uh, they're talking with the other four kids from Ultra Despair Girls. If you remember, they're all actually, they all actually survive, the other four kids. So they're talking with them, they're trying to figure out where Monica's at because the whole point is they're trying to find Monica because they think she has a bigger role in this whole thing that she's like controlling the game or something. Um... The whole episode kind of just Toko and Kamaru finding Monica. That's most of the episode. They just find her. They confront her. They find out Monica's not behind any of that shit. She just happened to insert herself into the game with not really any real specific intention. She just, I don't know, doesn't really say she has any intentions there. But apparently she did find out. She got some kind of hint that one of the original Hope's Peak members, when I say that I mean the characters from Danganronpa 1, are probably 100% going to die during this killing game. So that either means it's going to be Makoto, Kyoko, or Aoi. Because Hiro and Byakuya aren't even a part of this little killing game. So one of those three is going to die. That's the prophecy that Monica tells them. So Kamaru and Toko go back to... I don't know if they... I think they call Makoto directly, actually. And they don't call Byakuya back. They call Makoto directly. And they tell him. They say, hey, one of you guys is going to die. And that's basically the whole episode 7. That's all the episode comes through as that. The entire thing. That's the whole episode. Okay, episode 7 of Despair Arc. Here's the title. Are you ready? The biggest, most atrocious incident in Hope's Peak High School history. Yep, this is the one they all refer to in the games. Here it goes. This is when it happens. So, basically, uh, it starts off with Junko. She just met with Mitarai in the previous episode, right? She basically uh, gets... He, he basically shows her that he's really good at, you know, doing anime. And it turns out he's got some weird skill where he can, like, insert subliminal, subliminal messaging into his anime so much. So, like, you don't notice it, but it fucks with your brain. And it makes you, you know, it basically inserts a, whatever kind of feeling he wants into your brain. So he can induce happiness, sadness, despair, hope, whatever. He can induce that with his anime. Whatever kind of fucking shit he can draw. He can draw like a motherfucker, essentially. Uh, and Junko notices that and goes, holy crap, I can use this for something. And so, you know, wheels are turning in her head. But in the meantime, uh, Imposter Kid, oh, it turns out uh, Junko you know wants him to do animation for her essentially he doesn't really know why or what but he tells her that he wants that and or she tells him that she wants that and he's you know he's okay with that he's got a friend it's a hot it's a hot model girl why would you not be like yeah sure whatever oh whatever you want uh it's a high school kid what do you expect uh the point is she like puts him into hiding so you know like a secret place that nobody can find him while he's working on this stuff and so the imposter guy is worried about him because he can't find him so he actually sends Mikon to go look for him. I forget why he sends Mikon, but he sends Mikon to go look for him. And lo and behold, guess who intercepts Mikon? Junko. Junko meets up with Mikon and immediately just inserts despair right into her brain. Are you serious? Mikon is way too influ influenceable. If you remember correctly, she was all about being horned up about fucked up despair type shit. And, uh, well, <laughs> she immediately attaches to Junko without even any hesitation um also another big thing that happens in this one is uh junko and mukuro actually go break hajime out of his place because he's still like locked up below the school they haven't let him out loose yet junko and mukuro let him out though and now he's out and about i mean he's not like going around just killing everyone that's not really his thing but he can pretty much do whatever the fuck he wants and he's scary as shit with his long ass demon hair so yeah um yeah so they let hajime out and they actually take him to a classroom this is where the incident begins they take him to a classroom uh where the school's student council is at and junko throws a bunch of weapons into the room and basically says nobody leaves only one person leaves 
no and and then she i think she kills i think she has mukuro kill one of them or something and says see if you don't kill each other we kill you last one alive win like leaves basically and it's just so <laughs> it's it's real fucked i know i'm laughing about it but it's just i'm remembering the episode because it's so fucked all the student council members just start murdering each other and it's 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 so jacked up because some of them don't want to fight the ones that do want to fight i mean it's basically battle royal mode and it's so fucked up like it was so fucked up to watch i was like man holy shit anyway so that happens the school is outraged but they the the board members and stuff still want to cover it up they're like really first we had the murder suicide and now you want to cover up an entire massacre in a classroom are you kidding me and and like the headmaster guy the the one that's actually remember it's junko or junko it's kyoko's dad remember kyoko's dad is technically the headmaster of the hope peak right he's technically a good guy he's not even the one behind all this he's like fuck that i don't want to cover this all up but he's like they're forcing him to and so yeah it's it's real fucked up and then in the meantime junko because they're covering it up is out there telling all the reserve course students about what's actually happening and uh yeah the reserve course students are not happy about it and they want to start a rebellion against the hope's peak basically so she incites the reserve course to attack hope's peak like ultimate side it's uh she starts a war essentially with her first she set up the killing incident and then she incites the other side to attack because of the cover-up it's Junko, man, master manipulator. It's it's where you get to see the Junko that you like. You don't really get to, you get to see her the fruits of her labor usually, but you don't get to see her actually doing it. And it was really cool to actually see her fucking shit up in real time. And it was it's fucked up, but it's just you you realize why she's such a good villain because of the show. The show actually cements a lot of the good stuff that the games don't really get a chance to explain because they're you know they're still games. Um, but yeah. This was the craziest episode, and honestly, this is the episode where I actually, this is the last episode I watched back in January before I stopped and took a break until a few weeks ago. Not because of the episode that it was, it was just a good spot to stop on the night when I was watching, and then I just happened to not have time after that to come back to it, and I just kept postponing watching it again. It just happened to be where I stopped. <laughs> it just worked out that way. Anyway, let's get back to the future arc, where... Things qu aren't quite as dire, but still a little bit, because people are still trying to kill each other. Okay, so Future Arc Episode 8. This is where I came back to a few weeks ago and picked it back up. Um, basically, where it starts off is uh, Mon the Munakata guy actually finds Makoto Aoi in the, with the wheelchair girl, and, th and then he attacks them. But the wheelchair girl goes into berserk mode. Uh, wheelchair girl meaning, like, the you know, the robot version of her. Remember, she's not a real person. She's being controlled by Monica. I don't know if she's she's an AI essentially because they don't really show Monica anymore after the after this point in the show, but the point is she goes into berserk mode to fight against Munakata. Meanwhile, Aoi and Makoto can get the fuck out of there, and uh, yeah, so wheelchair robot chick fights Munakata for a while, and I don't think anything else happens there other than no, I think the whole episode just ends up with them fighting. I don't think anything else happens there. Yeah, so yeah, so the room where they found the blacksmith guy dead. In the previous episode, it was Kyoko, Mitarai, and the other teacher guy. What was his name? I don't even remember his name. I don't know. It's the other teacher guy. So they found the blacksmith guy dead, but Kyoko kind of deduces that he didn't actually get killed by the knife in his chest. He may have got poisoned, which means did his forbidden action happen? Probably. Uh, while they're there, the uh, baker chick shows up. Mm -hmm. remember she uh where she left off she was going up to meet up with her blacksmith boyfriend that was where we left off after she got away from seiko trying to kill her that was a couple episodes ago so just a reminder on that um baker chick shows up uh you know basically to be all freaked out about everything and trying to be sad about her boyfriend being dead whatever um but while that's all going down uh the uh the boxer dude shows up that's right that's right boxer dude shows up and uh i'm trying to remember exactly the order of things going down but yeah oh oh you know what let me rewind that one step kyoko because remember blacksmith guy before he died he actually found a secret door i, f I know i haven't brought that up again because it wasn't relevant till now there was a secret door that he had found that might lead out of the building 
and then he and then we ends up we end up finding him dead right after that right so now kyoko finds the same door and baker chick starts acting a little bit suspicious about it like oh shit does she have something to do with her boyfriend being killed because of the door thing i don't know but anyway boxer guy shows up right after that to kill everybody he's like i'm gonna murder all y'all bitches fuck y'all shits you're all gonna die boxer dude's all pissed off and uh well um it turns out and, he, and he's got a weapon in his hand by the way it turns out the other teacher guy kind of notices because remember he's a boxer guy why isn't he not just punching everybody that's because his forbidden action is probably don't punch anyone with your bare fists so he's using weapons um because of that he i don't know the teacher guy pisses the boxer guy off and then there's some kind of trap that was set for the you know I don't know, there's some kind of trap set in the room that basically shoots the fucking boxer guy in the chest with a fucking javelin or a spear or some shit. I, I, I don't know, some kind of weird trap. And so, yeah, they dis, dis, they just dis, disarm him and he can't fight anymore. I mean, he's not dead, but he's down. He's injured. And uh, then, while that's going on, uh, the baker chick springs her little plan into action and there's another trap in the room that basically makes the floor fall out in the room and Kyoko falls in the hole. Well, lucky for her, the fucking, um, the, uh, the teacher guy, sorry, I was blanking on his name, but whatever, the teacher guy, he actually jumps into the hole and, and catches her with his left hand. Okay, well, it turns out his action, he can't, oh, this is not left, this is actually my right hand, left hand. He can't actually open his left hand. His whole, I guess his left hand the whole time, if I went back and looked at the show, was actually clasped or whatever, clenched the whole time. If he opens his left hand, then he dies. That's his forbidden action. I'm not sure why, but that was his forbidden action. And when he did that, he saved Kyoko, but poisoned himself in the process. And so he like he basically did that, yanked her up and threw her up, and then he dies because he's poisoned. He just falls in the hole. And that's how that guy goes. Thanks, Baker Chick, for being a bitch. Um, yeah, so that's basically how... Oh, and because of that, they figure out... Because they're, they're you know, she's worried that the door is going to be a door to escape to get out of the building. Turns out Baker Chick's forbidden action is nobody can escape the game. If anyone escapes the game, she dies. So that's why she didn't want anyone to go through the door. And... That's why she killed her blacksmith boyfriend because she didn't want him to go through the door to escape. And basically, his forbidden action is to not eat anything. She's a baker. She fed him food. He died from eating. And then she just put a knife in his chest, I guess, to thwart off why he actually died. It's weird. It's all fucked up, man. This whole shit's fucked up. <laughs> baker chick, fucked up bitch. So basically, she's all alone now. Now I remember why the boxer guy, when I, I wrote boxer guy tries to leave, I'm like, why does it matter that he tries to leave? Because he finds out that that door, he thinks the door is going to be an exit also. So he tries to go through the door while the biker chick tries to stop him. That's what it is. Okay, sorry. that's I wrote that down, but I wasn't very clear. And so while they're doing that, Kyoko and Mirai leave. And you're like, what? Do they know something about that door? Do they don't, they don't care that it's an exit? Or it could be? So back in the Despair arc in episode 8, uh, the anime guy, he finds a video on his computer of the killing incident that happened in the last episode that Junko had recorded. And that freaks him the fuck out. And he's like, no. And Junko's like, come on. You know you want to make this into a video for me and I can use it with your anime, you know, editing skills to fucking brainwash people. She basically just flat out fucking tells him that. Um, in the meantime, uh, the rest of the class is wondering where the hell Mikon's at this whole time, because she's not there. Remember, she got captured by Junko in the last one, or at least, you know, influenced by him, or her. Junko's a girl. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they basically, the whole class actually decides to go look for Mikon. That's the plan. They're going to look for her. And while they're looking around, lo and behold, lucky-ass Nagito, like he always does comes across a little secret switch by a statue and nobody else but him and Chiaki actually stops and him and Chiaki find this find this secret passage and they go in by themselves it's only Nagito and Chiaki remind you the rest of the class is off looking for Mikon elsewhere so Nagito and Chiaki go down there 
uh, and they find Junko with Neat Mitarai down there. And, uh, well, Nagito pulls out a fucking gun and he's like, freeze, bitch, to Junko. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, freaking Hajime out of nowhere shows up, fucking knocks the shit out of Nagito, grabs the gun, and shoots him. Yeah, he actually shoots Nagito in the chest. Lucky for Nagito, he had a fucking something in his fucking pocket that saved his life because, you know, he's the lucky guy, you know, he didn't actually die. But he gets shot, even if he didn't die. Um, I think he actually gets shot. Did he get shot again? I think he gets shot that one time. I'm thinking he gets shot again for some reason. Uh, but then, but, that, but it knocks Nagito out, essentially. But Chiaki is now down there by herself, and, uh, well, that's bad. But in the meantime, while this is all going on, Mitarai actually somehow gets out of the room and runs the fuck away, and he finds the teacher. <laughs> he somehow finds Yukazome and runs away when he went, when he's looking around. He finds Yukazome, the teacher, his old, you know, his teacher lady, and he's like, uh, uh, tell, there's things going on. I need to tell you all the things I've been doing wrong, blah, 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 about the whole situation that's going on. So that's that's basically what happens in the episode. Okay, so episode 9 of Future Arc. Well, let me start off by one thing I also forgot to mention at the end of the 8th episode, which I didn't write in my own notes. At the end of the 8th episode, Byakuya actually sh shows up at the building where, you know, where the, where the Future Foundation, you know, the building where all this stuff is going down. And they try to blow up to get blow up a hole to get in, basically. And essentially, they fuck the building up, and it starts collapsing. Fast forward to episode nine, the building's not collapsing. So what the fuck? Well, they open the door, the the secret door that that boxer dude found, or I should say that everybody's been finding at this point, but the boxer dude was last trying to go through. They open that door and find out it's a dead end, and it's basically just an open room with a window and they're underwater yep the building's underwater it's pretty neat essentially it's an identical building to the one that byaku had just tried to go in and was collapsing everything's identical somebody's a fucking genius and they friggin replicated everything about the building underground underwater genius so yeah that happens now back to the other things of where we left off from last episode. Munakata was fighting with the robot, the wheelchair girl. Munakata finishes her off. Wheelchair girl's done. Robot chick is dead. I mean, she's already actually been dead for a long, long time, apparently. But now her robot counterpart that Monica was controlling is now dead also. So there you go. In the meantime, Boxer Guy, after being all mad about the door being leading to nowhere, um, he comes back out... And uh, meets up with Munakata, his best friend. You know, they're, they're hanging out again. They're like, hey, dude, things are going bad. But Munakata, after having killed the old guy, has gone absolutely apeshit. Because he's like, I'm killing everybody in this game, basically. That's his new mindset. Everyone must die, and then I'll die. That's kind of his mindset. Nobody gets out of here alive. Um, so yeah, after killing the robot chick, Boxer Dude shows up. And then he kills his own Boxer Dude friend. I was like, oh, damn. Didn't even, like, wait. He just did it right then and there. He's already all corrupted and fucked up. He's done, dude. <sighs> anyway, so Boxer Dude's dead now, too. Holy shit. And so that's two more people just gone. Um, yeah. In the meantime, remember Baker Girl, after having... real. Well, now that she realizes that the exit's not an exit, nobody can really escape anyway, so her bracelet thing's not a problem anymore. She's off on her own again, wandering around being all sad about having killed her boyfriend for no reason. She's pretty much mad about and sad about and really depressed about that, so that's good. Um, yeah. And then the next time... Right. So then we get to the fourth sleep time, where they actually all fall asleep again. Oh, wait. Let me back up one step. Uh, Makoto and Aoi actually meet up with Kyoko and the anime guy again. They meet up with each other. They barricade themselves in a room again because they know the next sleep time is coming up. And uh, Kyoko, you know, they have their conversation about the whole situation and what's going on. And, uh, yeah. It's all fucked up. But then the fourth sleep time comes and it is revealed that the baker chick is dead. Big surprise. She's off on her own. No surprise there. Um, but also... When they all wake up, the four of them in the room, Kyoko, Aoi, 
Makoto and the and Mitarai. They wake up in the room that they're in, and Kyoko is dead. Rip Kyoko. And the only way that we know she's dead is her bracelet went off. Son of a bitch. And when they look, they actually look at her forbidden action after they see her dead, and they read it, and it says, Make it past the fourth sleep with Makoto alive. God damn it. That means Monica's little fucking foretelling of one of the Hope's Peak Academy people gonna die happened and thus kyoko is dead officially dead and i was like no i was really sad when aoi was thought to be dead but then when kyoko is dead no i was just like no not kyoko no what a shitty way to set up the game make it past the four sleep with him alive makoto should have killed everyone i mean sorry kyoko should have killed everyone <laughs> anyway and then the, le the episode pretty much ends off with Munak. So all that's left now, let me let me recap who's left now that all these people have died. It's Munakata, Makoto, Aoi, Mitarai. I think everyone else has now officially been eliminated from this equation. I don't think I'm missing anyone. I think that's all that's left. So we're down to four. Now the Kyoko and the Baker chick have both just died. The teacher guy died last episode. The robot girl's completely dead now. Everyone's fucking dead. Everyone's gone. So Munakata calls Makoto out, and let's throw it down. It's the end, boy. Let's do a final battle between Hope versus Hope, because Munakata thinks he's Hope. Makoto knows he's Hope. Let's have a Hope throwdown. Before that, though, let's go back to the Despair arc. Well, if things weren't already fucked up on the Despair side already, let's get to Episode 9, shall we? So remember, Teacher is on her way to go help Chiaki and Nigito out from Junko's situation. Uh, she shows up helps Chiaki escape with Nagito, they actually get away, but in return, Teacher is actually captured herself, and <sighs> Junko basically straps her down, puts the freaking despair video on that shows the killing incident and Mitarai's whole brainwashing thing, and uh, Mukuro tinkers with her brain, and booyah booyah. <sighs> Yukazomi is now a despair mode, you know? It's fucked up. It's real fucked up. In the meantime, Chiaki and Nagito are going back to the rest of their class to tell them what's going on. They all band together and say, we need to go help Teacher. Let's do it. So they all get together. They're all excited. Let's go get to Teacher and save her. Mind you, remember, Mikon is already part of Junko's little plan. Don't forget about that. Mikon has already been corrupted by this. Anyway, so they all go back down to where the hideout is where Junko's at but on the way Miyaki, Miyaki Mikan shoves Chiaki into a hole along the way and it's like wait what why why did she single out Chiaki specifically anyway Mikan basically shoves Chiaki off to the side into a hole and then continues on with the rest of her classmates making an excuse why she's not there um Chiaki wakes up by herself in this mysterious hallway, and her teacher, Yukazome, finds her. But remember, Yukazome's already been brainwashed. This is bad. But we don't, you know, Ch Chiaki doesn't know that, so she follows her. She goes with her. And that's where that leaves off. Uh, the rest of the class is still on the way to saving, you know, their teacher. And then, in the meantime, Junko goes off on her own. Uh, I forget exactly what she's going off to do. But she gets confronted while she's on her way to do it by the boxer dude. In the meantime, while this is all going on, the the uh, the Munakata dude, he's like, you know, one of the headmaster dudes at the school. He's not the headmaster, but he's like, you know, one of the board members or whatever at the school. He works at the school, essentially. I remember they're investigating the whole situation. He says, he they basically have narrowed it down to it probably being Junko being the problem. So bo he's like, boxer guy, you go get her. And so he goes after Junko and confronts her and that's where that episode ends it's, he ends up like showing up to confront junko so boxer dude versus junko and um is there anything else oh and this whole time junko starts or before that happened i forgot about the part where junko basically was talking to meterai the guy the anime kid about how she's using his shit to brainwash everyone and then he's he just feels so ashamed of what he has done and he didn't realize that he was doing it for for that reason 
and, he, and then she just lets him run. He just runs away. He just gets to run away. That's pretty much the last you get of Mirai. He just runs away. So Future Arc Episode 10 is mostly just Makoto versus Munakata battle. And they're basically just arguing with each other. Makoto can't run, so he has to like lure him in through rooms and stuff. Um, it turns out, while they're doing this whole situation, they find out what the forbidden action for Munakata is, which we still didn't know, was actually to open up a door with his hands. Like, he can't open up a doorway, essentially. So, basically, Makoto, like, lures him into a room where he can't leave. <laughs> Something like that. It's kind of weird. So he needs somebody to open the door for him. It's it's very strange why Munakata can't kill Makoto, but that's what happens. He lures him into a room where he can't kill him. They have their big conversation about whose hope is better. Uh, you know, the way Munakata is going about it is not hope. It's, you know, rooting out despair by killing all of despair. I mean, that's the way he's going about it. Um, yeah, basically they, they argue about that. Uh, Munakata actually finally reveals exactly what the old man told him about who the real killer is. The, apparently the old man said the real killer is everybody who's in the Future Foundation, or at least as part of this game. He's saying everyone in this game is the killer. That's what the old man said. He told him that everyone in the game is the killer. And he's like, wait, what, everyone is? How does that make sense? Well, after he tells him that, Aoi shows up with, with Mirai, and they have a notebook that basically is Kyoko's notebook. Sorry, they find, they bring the Kyoko's notebook in, and Kyoko had already actually figured out who the killer is as well, or at least she has theories about how it works which will get revealed in the next future episode. So yeah, it's not a very uh, extensive uh, action-y episode. It's more of just an argument, conversation, final battle type convers uh, you know, episode. We are getting close to the end, so it makes sense, right? So anyway, we'll get back to who the attacker actually is, or at least how it works, in the next one. But for now, back to the spare arc. Alright, another episode where Junko gets to shine. Like, we haven't already had that since she showed up at school. Uh... <laughs> Basically, episode 10 of Despair Arc is Junko and the boxer dude have their little showdown first. Basically, she has an army of reserve class students just fucking attack the shit out of boxer dude. So much so that he can't even... He can't even... He can't stop her, basically. He she, he loses to her with her army. And uh, she basically figures out that not only, you know, does his he best friends with the Munakata guy... But she deduces that he actually loves him, like he's in love with him, and threatens to reveal that to Munakata if, you know, if he doesn't go back and tell her. Basically, she says, if you don't go back and tell Munakata that I'm not involved in this, then I'm going to tell him. And I'm like, you're going to let this whole situation, boxer guy, by the way, is retarded. The, you're gonna let this entire situation slide just because you love your best friend and you don't want to tell him. So you're gonna let all these people die and get fucked over just because you don't want to tell your best friend that you love him. That's fucked up mindset right there. <laughs> anyway, so that happens. Um, at least that's the deal she makes with him. She he, It doesn't actually get to the part where he goes and tells him that yet, but that deal is made. And, uh... She, in the meanwhile, uh, or in the meantime, let's go back over to where we left off last episode. Chiaki uh, was off on her own with the teacher lady, who was now brainwashed, mind you. And teacher lady leads her into a room. It's basically a trap. Chiaki is now trapped by herself in a dungeon. An actual video game type dungeon where she's got with traps and death you know death traps and things to kill her all over the place like legit and uh well well that's about to well like that's where she's at uh before before the the whole situation with her begins uh the rest of the class who was after you know trying to save remember they're trying to save the teacher that's what their plan is anyways they get on an elevator go deeper underground and they end up at the goddamn you remember the trial? What do you call it? The, the courtroom from Danganronpa 1? Remember the courtroom? They end up at the goddamn courtroom. Motherfucker. They're in the freaking courtroom. I guess Danganronpa 2 has it as well. But Danganronpa 1, it's at the Hope Peak Academy, right? They end up in the goddamn courtroom. And then on the screen that pops up while they're in there is the is a freaking you know, thing with Junko 
basically showing how Chiaki is trapped in a dungeon and about to basically be killed. Basically, they do the whole Danganronpa death sequence thing with Chiaki. And the rest of the episode is just Chiaki trying to escape the dungeon and basically becomes the martyr for the Danganronpa 2 class to become the remnants of despair. She is sacrificed by Junko. Junko basically murders Chiaki right in front of their faces. And the rest of the class, because they were all her, you know, they were all her friends, and they got to watch her die right in front of their eyes. What a fucked up episode. And what a brilliant way to actually make me care about Chiaki. Because <laughs> if you remember when I was playing Danganronpa 2, I'd said a lot of stuff about how it was hard to like any of the characters from Danganronpa 2. And a lot of it still carries over to Danganronpa 3, the anime. But Chiaki is way more likable now that you know she's a real girl and what she went through and how she was like the beacon of hope for the class and like she actually was that like it wasn't just some weird like she was a created like that fact that she was a real girl that they all rally behind made a lot more sense to me like i know it was kind of that way in danganronpa 2 but they really pushed it and fucking drove it home that she was the reason they became the way they were when they became when they went despair mode and became the remnants of despair for junko and yeah that pushed the whole class over the edge and they all became remnants of despair that day that's when they became junko's fucking army essentially shit's real fucked up watching shiaki die it was it was real it, they did a real good job with that shit for real anyway and then i believe at the very end of the episode uh hajime you know Remember how Hajime and Chiaki were actually kind of like old friends before he got his ass beat and turned into freaking Izuru? Remember how they were friends for a minute? Well, Hajime shows up, sees Chiaki laying there, bloody mess, basically about to die. She's not completely... She hasn't lost consciousness yet, but she's bleeding out. And she has a final little small conversation with Hajime and just kind of says, you know... Um... You know, remember who you were before you fucking became what you are now, you evil fuck. She didn't really say it in those words, but she's just trying to bring out the old Hajime, essentially. And then Hajime sheds one tear. Yes, evil Hajime sheds one tear. And then the episode ends. Oh, and he takes her little Galaga anime hit clip that she has in her hair. And that's that's where that ends. Freaking rip Chiaki. It's actually really sad. It's really they did a really good job. Anyway, back to future arc. So back in the future arc in episode eleven, remember we left off in ten. Uh, there's Kyoko's notebook, and in episode eleven we read it and we find out she thinks everyone committed suicide. But how did they do it? They probably used the monitors, because all over this building there are monitors all over the fucking place, you know. And you assume it's so they can monitor the game. Turns out. There's nobody monitoring this game. They're literally just locked in a building, and everything seems pretty automated just based on, you know, these monitors, essentially. So what they decide and they figure out is that the person closest to the monitor is the one who will wake up. And essentially they wake up, they kill themselves. Because the video that plays on the monitor has got some kind of brainwash technique that makes you go insane and want to kill yourself. And they decide they want to test that out because they're not 100% sure that's actually true. So Makoto volunteers to be the one to do it. They tie his ass up and then they all go freaking hide somewhere before the next sleep mode happens. And when the, when the sleep mode happens, you know, sleep mode 5 happens, Makoto wakes up, the monitor right in his face because they basically tie him up right in front of a monitor. And then he goes... I Basically... He goes fucking insane from the video. He tries to kill himself. He actually wriggles out of the ropes. I don't know how the fuck that happened. They tied him really terribly if that's the case. He somehow wriggles out of the ropes. He gets to see a whole fucked up flashback thing in his head where he freaks out because he sees all the kids from Danganronpa 1 alive and then dead again. And they, you know, basically the brainwash is fucking with his head. You get a whole little psychedelic sequence with that. And then right when he's about to stab himself with the knife... The fucking boxer guy shows up. What? Didn't Munakata already kill that guy? Apparently not completely, because he shows up and he freaking and he freaking saves Makoto from himself, essentially. And I'm like, what? Out of nowhere, dude. I thought Boxer Dude was dead. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. But anyway, 
boxer guy. Uh, they basically tell him that the boxer or Makoto tells the boxer guy that the whole plan is be or the whole situation is because of the monitors. And so, oh, apparently boxer guy has an idea of how to deal with that, and he goes off on his own. And he actually goes to the power room. Apparently he knows where the secret power room is at. And he turns off the power in the whole place. And thus saves, you know, everybody that's left alive. So Makoto, Aoi, Mitarai, and Munakata are still alive. And basically once he turns off the power completely, the bracelets pop off of their arms. And, uh, yeah. They're, they're all good. They're saved. The game's over. Um, and then the boxer guy, because he's all fucked up from Munakata stabbing him, actually ends up bleeding out and dying for real. Um, and uh, Munakata actually goes and finds him as that, you know, as and he finds him dead in the meantime. But while that's happening, freaking anime guy, Mitarai, gets a freaking text from Kazuo. Yeah, the old guy. Who died from you know uh, what do you call it? Fucking Munakata got him. The 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 chairman basically the old the old chairman guy that got killed by Munakata earlier, the one that revealed who the killers were. He gets a text message from him. The fuck? How is he getting a text message from a guy that's dead? Another person that we think's dead is not actually dead. Holy shit! Nah. Well, we'll get more to that in the next episode. But yeah, he gets a text message at the end from from that guy at the end. That's the big thing. He's just like, what? A text from from Kazuo? What? <laughs> And then we go back to the fucking Despair arc. Okay, so this is technically the last episode of the Despair arc, episode 11, even though there technically is still one more episode that falls within this side of the arc. Because there's 24 episodes total. I think I said 22 in the beginning, maybe, but it's 24. Uh, there's 12 future, 11 Despair, and then there's a final episode. Um, we'll get to that in a second. But this is the last Despair arc episode, and so we get to finally fall the f see the fall of Hope's Peak completely. Junko's Army of Reserve Corps students, they basically just rampage the shit out of the Hope's Peak High School side of things. Kill everyone, kill everyone inside, burn the place to fucking nothingness. It's all fucked up. In the meantime, Boxer Dude, who's, you know, stuck with his deal with Junko about not wanting to reveal that he's in love with Munakata, and then remember Chisa, or Yukazomi, sorry, I call her Chisa just now, because I wrote it down in my notes as Chisa, but the Yukazomi teacher, they both go back to Munakata, who's, you know, basically his two best friends, now that they're corrupted, tell him that Junko's not involved. She did not do it. It is not her. And that's just a fucking flat-out lie. Even Munakata's like, really? That, like, we basically said it was her, and you're telling me it's not? You're my best friends, I believe you. Anyway, meanwhile, like I said, Reserve Corps students are rampaging the fucking school, uh, but remember, the remnants of despair now exist Danganronpa 2 class, they exist. And their teacher, Yukazome, is part of them now, right? So what they do to get around the whole, you know, murder thing is they actually come up with this plan to fake their own deaths. So they basically, they set off a bomb in their classroom to go off before, and they actually escape before it goes off. And then the whole idea is that they're all dead, right? So the teacher, along with the whole class... Well, not the teacher. The teacher doesn't fake her own death. She's actually the one that sets off the bomb, I think. Or at least helps them set it up. They all have their little farewell with each other because it's time to go spread despair across the world and fake our own death to start it. So they fake their own deaths and boom, the Anganronpa 2 character is off, on, off to do their despair thing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where they end up. Uh, the last thing is, on the other side of things, remember the other, the rest of the Danganronpa 1 class, if you remember, they barricade themselves in, in the old building of the school. That's where Danganronpa 1 takes place, right? In the barricaded school that they all decided they were going to stay in and stay in, stay in a shelter. Remember, they all agreed to stay in a shelter. So basically, the, the, the end of the episode is Junko and Mukuro going in there with them, because remember, they're part of that class, and uh, they're helping barricade the school in, and, you know, and that's the next part of her plan. And of course, they show little hints of Junko trying to subtly murder Makoto, but failing because of his weird luck that he has. Like, he's not the ultimate lucky student, but he's got some kind of weird thing about him that Junko's very intrigued by. And she's like, hmm, I'm going to keep this guy around. I want to see what he's all about. You know, she wants to know what Makoto's all about. She's intrigued by him. And we, from the events of Danganronpa 1, we know why that is and how that goes. So, yeah. 
Um, but otherwise, the last thing that happens in the Despair arc, because it's the end of that, like, series of episodes, they actually have one little quick credit scene where they show Chiaki and, and Hajime meeting for the first time inside of the simulation from Danganronpa 2. That's just a nice little little um, continuity thing where they want to show you where it connects to Danganronpa 2, essentially, after what happened there, when Hajime finally gets to meet Chiaki. But it's like they're re-meeting for the first time with, insi with inside the, you know, inside of the Danganronpa 2 simulation stuff. So they just have that little scene, and that's pretty much the end of the whole Despair arc. So Junko has successfully done her thing, and the remnants of Despair are now raping and pillaging, essentially. Cool. All right, so back to the future arc for the final future arc episode. Okay, so the final future arc episode 12. Remember, we left off with a text message from the old man who's dead to Niterai specifically, or Miterai. I keep calling him Niterai. It's Miterai with an M, right? I believe so. Anyway, Ryota. Ryota Miterai. Um, basically, the text message says that I was behind the whole thing. The Meaning the old man was behind the old thing. He set up the whole thing. Apparently he set up this whole new killing game. Um, and it looks like the whole thing was set up to show Mitarai specifically how his brainwashing thing, how he can use his brainwashing thing to help everyone, uh, rest help restore hope to everyone. Because obviously Mitarai was a big reason why despair spread in the first place. Because Junko used him, used his propaganda anime techniques to brainwash everybody to have be despaired can he use the exact same powers to do the opposite and spread hope across the world and Mitarai realizes this and then he goes into his own crazy mode where he's like I'm gonna spread hope everyone will have hope I will brainwash them to have hope hope will be there and there will be no despair anymore I will brainwash the entire world with hope like that's what Mitarai does and that's not good that's the exact opposite of Junko, and that doesn't make it that that doesn't mean that's a good thing. You want a balance. You don't want one or the other. You want a balance. Makoto and Kyoko realize that's a bad thing, but I believe, uh, yeah, Mitarai kind of shows this quick little fucking clip on his cell phone to Aoi real quick and brainwashes her for a second, and then uses that <laughs> uses Aoi to hold down Makoto while he escapes, so he can go do his broadcast of the of his hope video. And, uh, yeah, that pretty much happens. And then, uh, basically, yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything else. Did I write anything else down? What else happens? <laughs> I should probably make sure I get everything. I don't know. Once Aoi's brainwash wears off, it's temporary. Her and Makoto start going after him. Oh, and meanwhile, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so, meanwhile, Byakuya has finally gotten into the building and uh you know he brought in his soldiers right well Mitarai uses that moment to brainwash some of the soldiers with hope and then he orders them to defend him from anybody who tries to stop him from broadcasting so basically he took Byakuya's soldiers and used them I don't think it's Byakuya's soldiers specifically they're just future foundation soldiers and he brainwashes them essentially um, Byakuya has like his own guys like his own little secret service type guys but there's the you know the future foundation soldiers are also there and those are the ones that get brainwashed by Mitarai to defend Mitarai from being able to broadcast his video and that's or, yeah, so he can do that without getting stopped and that's pretty much oh okay and then while they're running Aoi actually gets shot in the leg by one of these guys and then Makoto, Aoi basically tells Makoto to go without her because she's, you know, she got shot. So he's like, all right, I'll go. And then he gets surrounded, so he can't get anywhere. And then right before things look bad, Hiro and Byuka, Byakuya show up. And Byakuya has his own little secret service, like I mentioned, that actually helps take out the soldiers. So Makoto doesn't get murdered by them. And that's where episode 12 ends. Yeah, leaves you cliffhanged. Why? Because there's a whole one more episode left in the series which is not a future arc, it's not a despair arc. They actually call it the hope arc episode. It's only one episode. It's the final episode of the whole show. Let's talk about it. So this is the final ultimate episode of the entire show and Makoto, you know, still trying to chase down Mitarai and he needs a way to catch up to him because he's got a head start where he's already started to like start to broadcast the video. He's like a countdown to, till broadcast time. 
And lo and behold, who shows up to help? The motherfucking remnants of despair. Yep, Danganronpa 2 class. They show up. The entirety of their class shows up. Well, minus Chiaki, rip. Uh, even, but it includes Hajime. Uh, everyone shows up, and they go to confront... Or they, you know, they whoop ass on a bunch of soldiers first. And then they go to confront Ni Mitarai. Remember, Mitarai was part of their class originally, so they know him. You know, he's part of them. And he's part of the Remnants of Despair. Clearly, he's part of it. I mean, he got corrupted by Junko just like the rest of them. But now that they've all been kind of sort of reformed from the whole Danganronpa 2 event where they were being reformed from the simulation thing, the whole idea was to redeem them from their, you know, despair. So, basically... They go in there, they talk to Meteorite, they talk him out of the brainwashing thing, they they be like, dude, you're one of us, just stop what you're doing, come with us, and we'll all live happily ever after together. Because the Remnants of Despair aren't trying to integrate themselves back into society, they're just out there just be like, okay, we fucked up, we'll go away, bye. Like, they're not trying to kill themselves, they're not trying to turn themselves in, they're just like, we fucked up, we won't do it anymore, and we're out. Like, if they stick around at all... People are going to fucking go after him anyway. So they're like, we're going to piece the fuck out of here. Meteorai, you're one of us. Come with us. Let's go. And that's basically really how the show mainly ends. I mean, they save him. They, like, Meteorai says okay after a long conversation. Turns off the counter countdown timer and they fucking leave together. And, yeah. Oh, oh, and they do leave behind one broadcast thing. Instead of the broadcast of Hope, they leave behind another broadcast where they announced that they were responsible for all of, the, all of the things that just happened. That way, Future Foundation doesn't have to take the blame. The whole, you know, anybody else doesn't have to take the blame. The remnants of despair have already caused so much trouble. They're like, you know, what's one more thing on our fucking, our record? Why not, right? We did it. Blame it on us. Move on with your lives, world. That's basically what the remnants of despair leave. You know, they already decided they're the martyrs anyway. Let's just use ourselves to just move on from this incident don't let despair spread anymore it's our fault move on <laughs> so that was pretty nice of them um and then there's one big moment at the very end of the show while they're all on this boat the all whole dong and rope two class is on a boat actually they're not on the boat yet are they i think they're already on the boat yeah they're already on the boat by this point they're on this boat at the end and Mekon actually mentions something about having found an antidote for the poison stuff that everybody had in their wrist bracelets. She's like, oh yeah, I had an antidote. Or, actually, she didn't have the antidote. She found the antidote on... Who did she find it on? She found it on one of the dead people inside of the, you know, that was part of the killing game. Oh, oh, she found it on Seiko. That makes sense. She found... The antidote on Seiko's dead body. The girl that was the ultimate pharmacist with the crazy... The crazy mask girl. She, apparently she had the antidote for the wrist thing the whole time. She... I don't know if she knew she had it, but she had it. Mikon found it. And she said she used it on somebody. There was one person from the killing game who was poisoned. Who she used it on. And it worked. Like they weren't completely dead yet. She uses it on fucking Kyoko. Yay! Kyoko's not dead. Yes! Oh, I was so excited. I was like, yes! Awesome. Kyoko's not dead. Sweet. No Aoi, no Kyoko, no Byaku, no Hiro. None of them died. Hell yeah. And obviously Toko's out there somewhere doing her thing. None of them died. Nice. And then there's a little bit of a flash forward. The show ends with Hope's Peak got rebuilt. Makoto's the new principal slash headmaster. Uh, you know, Kyoko's alive. Hell fucking yeah. Um, I mean, the rest of the guys are... The rest of the Hope's Peak guy, you know, the rest of the, that class, you know, they're, they're probably involved in some way. I don't really show. And uh, that's that's the show. The end, really. It's quite an anime. Quite a show. Quite a story. Quite a way to wrap up that tale. And I can totally see why none of this story is video games. Like, Danganronpa 1... It's a cool class trial type of game, almost like a Phoenix Wright type game. The second game, they kind of did the same thing, but they integrated it with the crazy idea that it's a simulation trying to redeem the Remnants of Despair. And the third game is not even one of those type of games. They made it into an entirely different game, which really doesn't even need to exist in the grand scope of things. It's just an extra side path with Toko and Kamaru on a different mission. Um, 
But all that gets wrapped up here in this anime, and I was like trying to imagine any of this becoming its own game. Like if Danganronpa 3 was a game, obviously it had to be two different games. One being a new killing game that happens after everything, and the other one being all the stuff that happened before Danganronpa 1. And I'm like, first of all, the stuff before Danganronpa 1 can't really be a game, unless it's like just a school life game. <laughs> It would just have to be a visual novel, essentially, only, where you're just reading. It has no choices. It has Maybe some some of the choices could happen, but it's all going to kind of happen the same way like the Danganronpa games do. Or the events just kind of happen and you have to pick the culprits. It would, I don't know. I don't know if they could really do games out of them, and I understand why there hasn't been games developed out of Danganronpa 3's stories yet, if there ever will be. So I can understand that. I thought it was a really good anime, and it really wrapped everything up really, really well. And we got to see a lot more Junko, which was nice, and how she, you know, became, how she spread her evil in the first place, which was fucking brilliant. It was great. I loved it, even though it was super fucked up to watch. It's one of the more fucked up animes I've watched. There's, I've watched some fucked up animes, but that, like in terms of just prolonged, multiple episode fucked upness, one of the one of the long, more, you know, fucked, fucked up ones I would say. I've definitely seen plenty of fucked up animes. Usually it doesn't last, it's not the whole s fucking show though, it's like, you know, there'll be a few episodes where it's really fucked up and sad, but there's a beginning that's normal and an end that's usually a happily ever after with, you know, redemption for something, but this one was not a lot of that, <laughs> except for maybe the very end. Um, yeah, I thought it was really good, I liked it a lot, I enjoyed that, I'm glad I watched that before we got on to the next game, even though I know the next game probably has nothing to do with any of this stuff, except for maybe some... Maybe there's some connections. I don't know yet. There probably will be something. But from what I've heard, it has nothing to do with this whole arc. So I'm glad I did did this little review. Now, I've been recording this for like almost a couple hours now. Once I cut it down, I'm sure it's still going to be a long video. I don't really want to cut this into episodes. So hope you've enjoyed my overview and talk through of this Danganronpa 3 anime. I know I haven't really given my own opinion on a lot of it. I just kind of gave you an overview of the whole thing. But uh, just know that I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Um, one thing, oh, ooh, one plot thing that I was a little bit annoyed by, but I think they might have talked about why it's not the case in Danganronpa 2. I just can't remember. But if you recall, there was a whole thing about how the Remnants of Despair actually, like, they fucking disfigured their own bodies. You know, they, like, they, they, like scarred their own bodies. And then the version of them that you see in Danganronpa 2 is actually, like, what they are used to look like. But what they actually look like is they're all fucked up and jacked up from the whole, you know, despair apocalypse. But then when you see them in the anime, they're all fucking normal. There's no, like, you don't see anything of the, like, any evidence of having them been scarred and fucked up. Now, maybe they implied that they've already been fixed by Hajime, because Hajime... Is a fucking miracle worker now that he he still has all the skills of all the ultimates but now he's kind of like half evil half normal hajime he's like half and half now so i don't know did he use his abilities to help everyone i mean technically he did but did he heal everyone to the point where they just look normal again i guess that's what's implied it seems that way but i thought that was a weird plot point they didn't like elaborate on because they made they, they made it seem like they were going to be all fucked up and weird looking but I don't know, I'm kind of sad I never got to see what they looked like when they were all fucked up. Just one clip of all of them looking all fucked up would have been interesting. But oh well. It's just one small thing I, I wanted to see that I didn't get to see. I'm sure there's other things I can't think of right now. But uh, yeah, I would say it's well done. It's well done. Good anime. Glad I watched it. Thank you for pushing me to watch it before I started the next Danganronpa. And, uh, well, if we have anything we need to talk about or discuss, please go ahead and go on down in the comments or in my Discord, and we can discuss now. I've watched it, so we can... All spoilers are now fair game, for at least for this 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 arc. Uh, obviously, Danganronpa V3, my playthrough of that, shall be henceforth. So keep an eye out for that. It should be starting relatively soon. And, uh, yeah, Danganronpa back on the channel for a bit. Get hyped! But don't despair. Have hope. Eh, you could despair a little bit. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Peace out!